Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 11 of my fitness database series. So if you want to learn how to build a fitness database, this is the series. But seriously, whether you care about fitness or not, all of the stuff that I show you in this series is going to be really cool for any other database you're building. So if you don't care about tracking your M&Ms and your steps, that doesn't matter because this is all good stuff. All right, let's see where we're at. We got our food list. We got our food items here. We got our filter boxes. Uh, we don't have a way to edit the list of the food groups aside from going to the table. So real quick, let's put together a form for that. I think I'm just going to copy the food list. Copy, paste. Let's call this the food group F. And then we'll design view this guy. And the reason why I copied it is because it's got all of the basic colors that I want to use. Now we don't need any of this header stuff. We don't need these buttons down here. This will be a real simple form. In fact, uh, we can get rid of most of this stuff. Just keep one of those fields for the food group itself. We can get rid of the footer. We can shrink that up. Let's change where it's bound. Let's bind it to, go to data. We're gonna bind this to the food group T. Uh, go to events, we can get rid of all of this stuff. In fact, we don't need any code in this guy at all. So let's just open her up and we can just control, well, don't control A because we got, you wanna make sure you leave the option compare database and the option explicit. So I'm gonna click right here. I'm gonna hit control shift down and then or it's control shift end, sorry, and then delete. We can get rid of all that code, save it. And then we're going to change the food group here to, let me get rid of that on click. We can change that guy to data description. You don't really need the ID on this form. Save it. Um, let's do an order by description here. And then we'll close it and then open it. And there we go. And then just resize it however big you want it. Stick it right there. You can put a button for it on your main menu if you want to. I'm gonna put a couple more buttons on here before we're done. So I'm gonna slide all this down. And I'll just copy this guy, copy paste. This is kind of like a a like a sub menu, so I'll just put food groups. And I'm going to make this guy a little bit smaller. Let's go nine point and make it an actual smaller button like that. There we go. There we go. Food groups. Call it the food groups button. Food groups button. Right click, build event, do command, open form, food. And type today, group F. Save it. Close it. Close it. Close it. Close it. Close everybody down. Open it up. <laughs> and then we'll hit food groups. And there it goes. You can slide it over here more if you want. Wherever you want to put it. All right, we got food groups. Now I'm going to set that food groups form as the list items edit form for this combo box. So if you want to add it and you're in here, you know, you're adding a new product and you're like, oh crap, I didn't add candy, right? You can then do that. So we're gonna go into here, design view. And let me resize this so we can see everything. Okay. And click on this guy here, go to data, find uh, limit to list is yes. Allow value list edits is yes, that's fine. Actually, this isn't a value list, so it doesn't matter. And then go to list items edit form, drop this down and pick that food group F that we just made. Save it, close it, close it. And now when we open it up, or if we hit add new, and I'm typing in, you know, M&Ms, and I, oh, I forgot candy. So drop this down, candy's not on here. I now get the list items edit form box. Click on that. You can now come over here. And oh, this, this remember this original form, since we copied it from this one, this guy uh, has allow add and allow deletion set to no. So let's change that design view, design view. Oh, it's a list items edit form. So you can't, it's, it's opened up as a dialogue. So you have to come back to here and do it. Right click design view. 
Okay, so in this case, I'm not gonna get too crazy with this because this is something you're probably gonna, you know, touch once in a blue moon. But we're gonna go to data, we're gonna go allow edits, yes, allow deletions, yes, allow additions, yes. So we can actually come in here and make some changes to stuff. Okay, so one more time, drop this down, hit the button. Now we can add, let me move this over here a little bit. Now let's put it, let's put it right there, yeah. And now we can add candy. Oh, and of course this text box is locked too. <laughs> yeah, close it, open it over here. Right click, design view. This guy, data, locked is no. Now we should finally be able to edit it. Try it again. Take three, third time's a charm. Click, candy, whoop. and then close it. And the nice thing about list items edit forms is it shows up there now. And one million calories. I don't know how many calories we're at. Okay. Oh, we could look it up. Let's see. M&M's uh, regular uh, normal size. Let's see if the get macros can get it. Yes. Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> it works. <laughs> what? There's two grams of protein in M&M's? I've got to get, start eating me some M&M's. If you want to learn more about that list items edit form, go check out this video. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is to set up referential integrity because we don't want to delete one of these items and then there's a there's a food item in it, right? So we're going to have it so that if you do have a food group, you can't delete items in that food group. Until you delete all of the items, then you can delete the food group. And I'm seeing here that I still don't have my... We turned the record selectors off, right? Yeah, we did. Okay, so... Record selectors back on. Okay. Now, this is up to you. You could do this or not because you might want to have it. Well, if I just delete the legumes group, just leave all the items. But, yeah, let's let's set up ref referential integrity. I think that's something that I would use in this case. Um, so, we're going to go to database tools and it's under relationships. I drew a blank for a second there. <laughs> and then we're going to bring in the food group table and the food table. We're going to join them by food group ID, click on one, drag it to the other one, and we're going to enforce referential integrity, which basically says, if you got a parent, you can't delete it if it's got children. Okay. Then we'll hit create. And it, 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 oh, because food tea is in use. Okay. So hang on, cancel that. You have to close these guys. All right. Now you should be able to do it. Enforce and create. There we go. There's our relationship. All right, save it. That just saves the layout of the table. Close it. And now if you come into a food group and you pick something like protein, you try to delete it, eh, you can't do it. Not a very friendly message, but yeah, we'll maybe deal with that later. Okay. And of course, if you want to learn more about referential integrity, go watch this video. One thing to note, of course, if you have a split database and you have multiple backend files, your referential integrity does not work across multiple files. For example, me, um, before I switched everything over to SQL Server, I had multiple backends for my business database. I had my order table and my order details table and my customer table all in separate backend files because they were quite large. And so referential integrity does not work across them if they're in split, split databases like that. And someone's beaming in. All right, now I think we are finally ready to start tracking meals. We'll make a meal table, a meal detail table, and then we'll start building those together and we'll do that in tomorrow's class. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Members, you can watch it right now because I'm gonna record a couple tonight. And that's going to do it for part 11, folks. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part 12. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more.
Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.